What's up everyone, Brandman here. I wanted to make this video to talk about the upcoming release of Stalker 2. I've been really mixed about the game because of the factors that have affected the development of the game and how consumers are reacting to the game. I want to start off by saying I will have some takes based in reality and common sense, so if you are the sensitive type, then this video might not be for you. I also want to state that I am not against this game. This is actually one of my most anticipated games of this year, so I'm really hoping it works out. But I feel like I have to bring criticism and skepticism to everybody else because of the factors that are involved with the development of this game. There has been a lot of things that affected this studio and the development of this game and I feel, I feel like it's my job to let people know before they spend their money on this game. A lot of people are under the assumption nowadays that you criticize stuff because you don't like it but that's not the case. You actually criticize stuff that you actually like, that you actually love, like your family and other things because you want those things to really work out. Of course, you're going to criticize things that you like and love a lot more. So I don't know why people have become under this assumption that just because you criticize something, you want to see it fail or you don't like it. I, I don't get why people think like that nowadays. Now that that's out of the way, I want to give a quick history about the Stalker games. The first game was released back in 2007 with the release of Shadow of Chernobyl. Two more games followed in 2008 and 2009. After the release of the first three games, they became cult classics. Gamers were completely fascinated by the gameplay, the setting, and the atmosphere of the game. The games were based off the Chernobyl power plant meltdown in Ukraine. That's what made them so fascinating because they had a mixture of reality, sci-fi, and fiction. I've always had a huge fascination with sci-fi fiction that has a touch of reality or history in them. But before we get another great stalker game to enjoy, we gotta hope the factors I mentioned in this video don't keep that from happening. The reason the games take place around the Chernobyl power plant is because the studio GSC Game World is located in Ukraine, so they took a real life event from their homeland and turn it into a sci-fi fiction which I admire. What I don't admire though is how they ran this studio since the first game released back in 2007. Back in the beginning days of the Stalker franchise, a group of developers ended up leaving the studio citing bad working conditions. This group of disgruntled developers allegedly took the game engine that the Stalker game was made on and went on to create their own studio. The studio that they created ended up being pretty successful by creating the Metro games. The ironic the part behind these two studios is that the studio behind the Stalker games hasn't done anything since the Fallout. Well, they did try and revitalize the Stalker franchise by announcing the release of Stalker 2 back in 2012, but it's pretty obvious that the game didn't release in 2012 because it's 2024 and it's about to release now, so I considered a failed attempt as doing nothing since. But on the other hand, the studio that the disgruntled developers created after the Fallout went on to release multiple successful Metro games and they're actually releasing their next game a week after Stalker 2 releases. I also want to add they were even able to optimize and perfect the Stalker game engine that they allegedly took from the Stalker studio. The Stalker studio wasn't able to even do that themselves. Check out this clip from Luke Stevens that shows the incompetence that this studio still has until today. Played a demo of Stalker 2 at Summer Game Fest, and I and everybody else I spoke to who also played the demo, I found the demo to be really rough. It was the worst demo I played at the show. That does not mean the final game is going to be the worst or going to be bad or anything. In, in actuality, it looks like people who have played the newest version of the game said that it's actually really, really good. What I have come to find out is that it looks like the demo we played at Summer Game Fest was the same demo they had used months before at another event. So it seems as though they were using very old demo software to showcase the game to press and media for some reason. And what they have now, the newest stuff that they just let some people like these guys at IGN try is much more impressive. And I'm very glad to hear that because uh, what we played was like, this doesn't look anything like the trailers you're showing. Can we try that? It felt like we were playing a game that was like a year out of date. And it feels like that actually probably was what was happening. I don't know why they would have given us demos that were were so old, but 
you know, I guess what's in the past is in the past. Why would you give a broken mess of a demo to game reviewers that are supposed to be reviewing your game to get positive coverage of it? That incompetence is just mind-blowing to me. Here's another example of the incompetence from this studio. They have had consumers pre-order money for over a year now because of the several delays that this game has had over the years. These consumers were worried about canceling their orders because they didn't know if they'd be able to reorder the game and get it in the future. The studio hasn't even given any updates if the game would go back up for reorder when the game actually got a 100% confirmed release date. That is, until they made this update a week and a half before the release of the game, saying the game was back up for order. The lack of communication is beyond annoying from this studio. It's just disrespectful at this point. And before you want to say to just cancel the pre-order and move on, that's not the point. The point is that consumers shouldn't have to deal with this out of a business. A business should operate as such. Another thing that I kept seeing surrounding this game was toxic positivity. I don't know why toxic positivity has taken over the gaming industry up lately but it's definitely not good for anyone. This is the toxic positivity that I have been seeing surrounding this game. People like this keep saying that we should support this game regardless because they have been struggling through a war. The person in this post actually proves my point in a way that I've always tried to make about this game. That is that maybe they should focus on the war in their homes instead of a game right now. I just don't see how this game can turn out good when they can't even have their full focus on the game and the business. The studio was even more focused on releasing a documentary about the struggles of development during a war before the actual game. I thought that documentaries are supposed to come after the release of said project. It feels like they wanted to release the documentary before the game to garner sympathy for the game to help it sell better. It just gives off the vibe that they are trying to guilt trip consumers into buying a game. If the game turns out good then that's a great comeback story and we'll have a good game to enjoy for years to come. But a game turning out good shouldn't neglect all the negative and anti-consumer aspects that has surrounded this studio over the years. Let me put it this way, if you or myself were this incompetent or this inconsistent over the years, we would be homeless because we wouldn't be able to hold down a job. I just don't understand why gamers are so quick to give these game companies a pass for their constant inconsistencies and their incompetence. That's why I focus on making videos like this to help people realize that consumers come first and to quit accepting these anti-consumer practices. Practices. The massive gamer that I am, I really hope that this studio can release a good game and have peace. I'm all for being able to peacefully enjoy gaming, but we can't keep accepting these below average practices in the gaming industry. It's not good for the art and the innovations of games. If you agree that you want the best for the gaming industry, so we'll keep getting great games, then give the video a like or a subscribe. Thanks for watching.